So here we are. Uh, this is for uh, the 7th of January, Thursday, 2021. And uh, I started in class, we started off uh, talking about, um, you know, you can't ignore what happened yesterday in Washington. And uh, I, I, I teach physics, right? So I'm not a political science teacher. Um, uh, we, but I do want you to always hear what we what was said in class. So uh, I came at it from a truth point of view that when you, the reason why I enjoy teaching physics is there's a truth. There's always a, a, a measurable truth and just the, the idea that it's, that it's, I'm not really coming down either side. I mean, obviously it's not good to trash the capital, but um, uh, the idea that you need to base what you're passionate about on truth and not on the word of a individual person, if there's no evidence. So like if I told you that the gravity on earth was, uh, gave an acceleration of uh, 20, uh, meters per second squared, you could easily refute that. You can go to the, you can go to the stadium and drop some balls and time it, and you can show me. But I could not deny it. You could show me the truth, and that's the way it is for most of physics. I mean, some physics is still like, like a quantum. There's still some things about quantum that they're still arguing about. Um, but then, you know, even Einstein, they argued uh, the truth of relativity. He came out with the idea of relativity uh, in the general special relativity in 1905, but general relativity in 1915, 1916. But it was not proved. No one believed him uh, that space time was curved until proof was offered in 1919 by Eddington on his expedition, looking at the, uh, that's something you should look into, uh, looking at the eclipse and showing that indeed starlight was bent exactly the right amount. Uh, what, I, what Einstein predicted. So the thing about physics is it's fascinating in that it is, and it is, it's comforting to me that we have these set of laws that you have to follow. I mean, you cannot break these physical laws. Uh, I think that's why people like sporting events, men and women, because it has rules. That's why we get so upset when, some, when, when a ref blows a call, because there are rules in this game. If you play video games, there are rules in this video game and, uh, and you gotta live by them. Um, but when it comes to politics, uh, that's not the case. Um, and I, I'm not saying left or right, liberal or conservative. I mean, I'm a Republican, I'm more of a Mitt Romney kind of Republican. I, I, I agree with a lot of Mitt Romney says, I'm fiscal conservative, et cetera, et cetera. But I've probably become more liberal in the last four years. Um, I'm not a progressive by any means. But anyway, um, so I think we talked about it. You know, it's gone to obviously went too far. You shouldn't have destruction and violence. And unfortunately, uh, four people lost their lives. Um, so, uh, but, but the point I was trying to make in class was that if you are going to be passionate about a subject, you should make sure you do your due diligence and don't be lazy. Don't, don't assume people are telling you the truth without finding evidence. And when 62 judges come out and find no truth, 62 judges in all parts of the country and the Supreme Court, by the way, um, did not find anything. I, that's what makes me question, why would you still follow? Um, uh, now I'm not calling that a cult, but I'm saying that the definition of a cult is that you follow a leader without any evidence. You don't require evidence. Um, that's not that's not necessary. And look through the history. Look 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 at all the history. You don't you you don't need to look far. You'll find plenty of evidence. Um, so, and I'm not saying that elections aren't rigged, and that does happen in the world. Obviously, uh, Putin does not does not really get 90% of the vote in Russia. Uh, they say he does. Um, Saddam Hussein did not get 92% of the vote in Iraq. That was rigged. Um, so yes, uh, it does happen, but not in America. Not now local elections, the old county sheriff. Yeah, I mean, I, there are sometimes that there are some shenanigans that go on locally, um, but uh, not on a national level. There's too many moving parts. 
and there was too many people that verified. So I feel totally confident that it was extremely fair election. So uh, you, you think what you want there, but obviously going to extremes and burning down property, or not burning down, but destroying and going to people's stuff, that's gone too far. And I, I really believe that 90% of the people that were there were there just to protest. And they, they, that's their right. That is their right. There were those 10% that were agitators that were, that were very upset, bent on destruction, no, it was not Antifa, good grief. Um, but there were people there that, I mean, there was a contingent from Norman, Norman that went uh, to Washington, D.C., Unite Norman. And there's some very good people in Unite Norman. I mean, I'm not, I don't agree with them, but, but I'm sure they weren't part of the people that were doing all the destruction. But they were, they were there in Washington. So I'm sure they were disgusted by and, and flabbergasted like the rest of us. So um, I hate, I hate pitting Americans against Americans uh, over something that that is fabricated. Uh, and every every judge and the Supreme Court agrees with me. So and and most Republicans, even Mike Pence agrees. <laughs> Mitch McConnell agrees with me. We're, we're in rare agreement. OK, so and it's all about truth, right? Um, so I, so my, my point to the students today was Pick something in your, pick a career in your life, whether it's welding or being an electrician or being a mechanical engineer or being a doctor or a teacher, but pick something, or a lawyer, pick something that you are seeking truth. Uh, it helps you to sleep at night. I feel like when I go to bed at night, if I feel like I've helped you guys virtually or I help my students in class, I help one kid. I had a student there at lunch and we spent 20 minutes talking about the uh, double slit experiment and electrons and Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And that was fun. And I felt like he walked away and he wanted to get, I gave him a book to read. So man, I, I, I feel like I'm on, you know, cloud nine. I, you, you need to have a job that you do that makes you feel like that. It doesn't have to be, you can make money. I mean, I don't make that much money as a teacher. I make okay. But you need to find something that that you feel good at night, whether it's, maybe you're a painter, maybe you paint houses, you did an amazing job, you know? So find something that you don't have to sit and quibble about the truth. All right, that's my point. Now, um, you all have your own and I don't want this to turn, it, turn into a 45 minute, um, which would be interesting. I would think it would be fun, but we don't have, we got things to do. So um, hopefully, um, I don't get fired from what I said today in class. A little passionate, but um, I wasn't, you know, I'm not trying to dissuade one or, you know, talk bad about one set of beliefs versus another. We all have our own. All I'm saying is make sure that your beliefs are backed in some kind of fact. Now, the other thing I point, one last point use more than one source, okay? Whether your source, like I watch MSNBC, I watch, I watch channel 200, which is four channels, MSNBC, CNN, Fox, and BBC, okay? And I watch all four of those. I watch them all four at the same time. If um, Tucker Carlson saying something I think looks interesting on the graphics, I'll turn to him. If, if Rachel Maddow saying something, I'll turn to her. If it's Wolf Blitzer, I mean, you know, I go around all the time because so you need to get different perspectives. I read different newspapers. I read, you know, um, San Diego, I read uh, Dallas Morning News, I read Washington Post, all electronically, you know, you read different newspapers. Find different points of view. There, there should be a class, there used to, a debate should be required for every high school student. Every high school student should have to do debate because in debate, my oldest son did debate all through high school and all through college. But in debate, you have to take both sides. They force you to take both sides. You have to take the, you know, one side, then the other. And you have to go back and research both sides. And it makes you understand there are two or three or four sometimes equally legitimate views on a topic, especially in politics. So there was, there's always a, there's a nugget of truth in these people that are marching on Washington not the ones that burned down store or that, that destroyed stuff, but the ones that they have, a, they have some truth. There's gotta be some truth there. There's, 
It's look at the history. You know, they've been oppressed. They've been, they feel like they've been oppressed. They feel like their jobs are taken away and there's, there's other people that are coming in. And so they're very angry, you know, but, but there's some truth there. Um, Black Lives Matter, there's, there's lots of truth there. I mean, it's, it just, you, um, you can't just be black or white, okay? No pun intended. You can't just look at everything black and white. You've got to look at the details and do your due diligence and don't be lazy. Okay. It's very easy just to believe one person, whatever they say is true, that's, then you're in trouble. I don't care whether it's a liberal you're following or a conservative, you're in trouble. All right, so done. Uh, this is uh, Thursday. And the thing we talked about now on the, okay, so I'm kind of, <laughs> this morning, every biology class was wiped out of Canvas. They just, it just, they don't know where it happened. They all got wiped out. And that scares me to death. I don't want my physics class wiped out. <laughs> so luckily it's early in the semester, but I, it just more and more makes me believe that I don't want to be associated too much with Canvas because it's extremely user unfriendly for one thing. Um, me trying to put in pictures and stuff and images and screenshots. And, oh my gosh, um, it's just terrible. I, I like parts of it. I like the grading part, it's okay. So parts of it I like, uh, but I'm going to, I am gonna keep this calendar on Canvas, on the homepage and it'll change every day. I'll probably put this on Facebook as well because right now I have the calendar, the main calendar and I have the links to the wrap-up videos, like we had yesterday's link, finally got up there last night, I'm sorry, it took so long, um, are on Canvas, and then some modules, the PDFs are on Canvas, and then about everything else is going on to Facebook. So someone asked me this morning if I could put the link to the wrap-up video on Facebook as well. That way they could find the lat and the screenshots. So yeah, I'll do that, it's not hard to do, it's very easy. Anyway, um, on the, wherever the calendar ends up being, uh, it'll probably, there'll always be a calendar on the homepage, but notice that I'll add the to-do list. And this was what they had to do last night, what I'm requiring. Now, I still have not figured out a good way to require for you all to do the homework. I want you to do the homework, but I can't think of a way where it's just me walking around with a stamp and stamping your papers. That works really well in class, but for you all, I don't know yet. They are going to need, it's going to be required of them. They have 20 stamps by the end of pack of four. Now, anything above 20, they get bonus. So it's good and bad for you. If you're not getting stamps, yeah, you don't have to have your homework done on time, which is, you should, but you could, you could procrastinate and get away with it but then you won't have a chance to get bonus and there could be a lot of bonus built in. I don't know. Um, so I've got, I know I've got to find a way for you all to get your quote stamps without being too cumbersome for both you and me. All right. So other than that, and now, the, now the, here's the, the Facebook group. And I know of anybody, you all go to the Facebook more than my in-class kids do, but I've changed a little bit. I changed the date, of course, spring 2021. But unit one used to be the packets, sheets, and the keys. Now unit one are the daily screenshots. So I, I like it. I can just stick them all. Here we go. I can stick them all on um, the Facebook. Uh, here we go. Right here, I can stick them all on the Facebook. And then I can also write some captions into some of them, like little things I, gotta, I can tell you about that particular, which I couldn't do last semester on Canvas. I would just slap them all up there. And then you go, what the heck is, what the heck is this? And without watching the wrap-up video, which who has time to watch that every day, uh, you didn't, th those didn't always make sense. So I'll try and put some captions on these. So even if you don't get a chance, now you're all speaking to the choir, you're all here, but I mean, say you missed tomorrow, you missed the class because you got to do something and you want to watch the recording and you can't watch the recording, there's no time. Then you should be able to go at least to Facebook and get a feel for the class with some small captions. So that's now unit one. The first thing, and get, remember, when you go to Facebook, go to this. Just ignore the discussions. Ignore this, really, because that's like new in Reddit. I mean, it's just whatever 
whatever, just chronologically what's happening. If you just want to see what happened that day, maybe, but if you're going to look for organization, go to the unit section and that's where it's organized. So unit one then is now screenshots. Unit two, so I got a bigger view of it here. Unit two is packet keys, packet sheets and keys. That used to be unit one. Uh, I will post a key um, on uh, 4.1 tomorrow night. Once I've come around and given out all the doggies, then I will post a key. So we'll, I'll do my final round of checking for uh, doing stamps tomorrow on this 4.1. And then from then that night, I'll post the key. So you always need to check the key. And that'll be on Facebook. Okay. And unit three is going to be where the semester tests are, or the semester take home tests are. And also, right now it says first semester. I'll change this this afternoon. Uh, to second semester, but it won't just be take home test. It'll also be practice problems, which you'll get the first set of those next week. And we'll hopefully do a lot of back and forth. That's where we'll spend most of our time going back and forth is on those problems. It's like a test taken at home. Uh, hey, it's called a take home test, but these are called problems. Uh, these, okay. And then the, la the only other one is the, the, the only one you really probably care about is unit four and that is reference sheets. Those are all the equation sheets will be. And that's what I showed you yesterday. I suggest you print those off or at least do PDFs of them. Okay, now uh, we're done with announcements. Any questions before we get into the physics? Oh, you'll have to hit your mic. I, I don't have all my screens up, so I can't see the comments. So um, any questions? Glad to see you're all here. Uh, I put, uh, Takaki, I found your notebook. It was at school. I brought it back home. It's now on the front porch. I think everybody else's notebook, Miranda, uh, Anthony, I think yours, you have something out there. I know. Yeah. Um, Brandon, I'm not sure. Sophia. Yeah. You asked about yours. I don't know if you got it or not, Rose. Anyway, Eric, your stuff's out there on the front porch, but I wouldn't let it sit there too long. Um, just, I got you got it. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, I noticed there's still quite a stack there. I bring them in about nine o'clock at night and then I put them back out again about 830 in the morning. So they don't like them out there at night. Okay. So there's the, the symbol for the doggies. Um, and if you guys, you guys are creative people. Um, what we did last semester was I said, well, uh, if you have it done, I'll, retro I'll retroactively give you the points, but that misses the whole point to the stamps. The whole point of the stamps is keeping you up to date at that day, not in February. I mean, yeah, we'll all have it done in February. Once the key's posted, it's like, yeah, anybody can go look at the key. Anyway, I want to see that you're doing the work daily. And I can see that being a real problem uh, virtually because you go, eh. All right. Here we are. So we have essentially completed the front. Uh, if you did the homework uh, like you're supposed to do, we've completed the front of, of uh, 4.1. We did number two, that's really 216. So we did that. That's on the screenshots, by the way, last night. Um, this is what we were working on when we, when we quit yesterday. We're work, we did we did this activities, we talked our way through it. Um, and that right, okay, before we do, we started, looks like we started number three. So before we get to number three, I, wanna, I want you to take out some paper, take out your notebook, if you have it, and we're, write this down. All right, this, this is like magic. I'm going to show you three graphs, and then like magic, I'm going to turn those into 21 graphs. You don't believe it. But it's there's three graphs for every situation, every free fall, and by the way, every projectile motion, uh, every projectile motion situation, and that is like ballistics, basketballs going through the air, baseballs, bullets, whatever it is, going through the rocks, whatever it is, going through the air is basically free fall on a conveyor belt. So once you understand these 
for free fall, you also will understand them, uh, the, the graphical situation for any kind of projectile motion. Okay. And we'll spend uh, good grief. We'll, we'll, we'll still be on projectile motion and stuff like that, even up in the February. Uh, we get into forces and energy and all that. Uh, I don't know if I told you yesterday, but I'm going to continue. Yeah, I did tell you this. I'm going to continue on into June doing these. and It's up to you whether you watch them, but we will get everything covered. It just might be the end of June, uh, and I'll tape them, and that's voluntary. But you will have access to information if you take an AP physical. Anyway, so here is, uh, this is the generic me throw a ball in the air, me catch ball at the same height I threw it up. Okay, that's, this, that's the generalized trio. Okay, negative trio. Okay, uh, but what if I, let's go back to what happened in number one on the homework. That is dropping a ball, uh, and you're supposed to do the trio on that, by the way. That is dropping a ball from the top of a building or something and just letting it go. Well, these are like window shades, okay? Um, and I, by the way, I'll show you this. I'll, I'll put this on tonight, but I have, I, I have a book that I, a book, I call it a book, that I wrote. It's about 40, 50 pages long. And it's, it's called How the Universe Works. And I keep taking excerpts from the book Here's an excerpt from the book. And if you look, if you think of this trio as a, as two, um, not really window shades, but two curtains, you can close the left curtain or you can close the right curtain. And that gives you, th this will give us access to 21 graphs now, not just three. So if we are dropping a ball from the roof, basically it is just closing that curtain. And so notice that here, the initial velocity, ah, the initial velocity is zero. Uh, my initial slope here is flat. Uh, and of course, G doesn't change no matter what. G is, you know, it's really negative G. Negative G doesn't change. So this is me dropping a ball from a top of the roof or from, the, or from just to the floor, all right? And that, if you go back and look at number one now, from the homework, that is what was happening there. We were dropping a ball. Uh, so we already know that this graph will look like, this graph will, uh, I always do the middle graph first. Well, that's the low hanging fruit, right? Get that one done, shaky hands here. But this graph, if I'm dropping a ball and it'll end up, oh, not that one. What am I doing? Get out of here. No, I'm dropping a ball, so initial velocity is zero looks like that. And then it ends up hitting the floor with some velocity. And then this then starts at a table. If you make that the origin or not the, if you make the origin the floor and then it comes down like that. So see, all I've done is I've taken that graph, that generalized graph, which looks like this and just covered, just shut the window curtain for the left side of it. So that's one situation, dropping a ball. Okay, now in class, I made them, I made these guys answer this, these guys answer this, but I can't redo really it here, I guess. I gotta figure out what, put you guys in groups. All right, what now, you say to yourself, what will the graph look like of if I were to throw a ball, like at number three, like we're about to do, if I were to throw a ball off a building and I throw it, I'm throwing it up. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's do number two first. Number two from um, actually last semester, where we throw a ball off the roof. We throw a ball off the building, okay? We don't drop it, we throw it. Now what do I do? Now I close a shade. Which shade do I close, left or right? You, you can answer that. I'm throwing a ball down off a roof, hits the ground. Which shade do I close? Partly. The left one? Yeah. So you go, well, okay. So look, I close the left one. That's not good enough, though. What do I got to do? I mean, that's, we already had that situation. 
but I've got to close it more, right? It's got to be, these are weird shades. They go all the way across. So I close it that much. That is the situation in which now notice that when I throw the ball, there is a negative velocity to begin with. See that negative velocity. Um, th this is not flat to begin with, not like it is here, not like it is here where it's supposedly flat. Here it's got already has a slope to it. This course doesn't change. So that's a situation like number two on the front where I threw the ball off the roof, okay? Now number three, which we're about to work, in that case, I'm gonna go back to generic. In that case, I throw a ball off a roof, but this time I throw it up and it comes back down, hits the ground below. Now what, now what shade do I close or do I start to close? Well, is it left? Well, left one again, but I don't close it all the way this time. I close it that far so that initially this is a, a, as a student said today, I said, oh yeah, I get it. That's a skewed bow tie. They found it, the, the lights went off. I said, okay, that's a skewed bow tie because here it's a bow tie, uh, but it's skewed towards the negative, right? So I do spend the green part. I do spend some time. I have initial positive velocity. I spend some time going up and then I spend most of my time going down. So the downs far outweigh the ups. Well, here's, here's the actual, and by the way, this is not projectile motion. This is ball going straight up and coming straight back down. Um, we're showing the duration though through time. So here the ball goes up to begin, hits its apex, then comes back down. So we're about to work one like that. Now, let me show you uh, another detailed example. Here's a, from, my, from this book I have, here's a detailed example of uh, that problem. This is example number 19 from that book. Uh, this is, it's dated. Uh, this is Joe Dynamo. He's trying to infiltrate Al Qaeda. So it kind of dates it. But um, here he is. He throws, he throws this, it looks like a, what is it, a grenade. He throws it up, a little violent, I must say. Throws it up and then it comes back down, hits the, hit, hits the ground later. So um, uh, notice that on this one, lines of this is a symmetrical situation so the time this time it spends going up is the same time it spends getting back down to the same place it was this this blue arrow and this red arrow they are congruent so congruent symbols congruent congruent um and then it keeps that same uh you know um tendency to curve the same curvature uh as it goes on down and then this graph this is like number three, he is a skewed bow tie again, spends a little bit of the yellow, a little bit of time going up and a lot of time going down. And now I've, I've shown this work out with equations. If you're into equations, I've also shown it worked out using graphs, if you're more into graphs, okay? This is, a, this is one you ought to print off and tape in. This is a really powerful uh, example. One of my better ones I did back in those days. That's back when I thought I'd write a book. <laughs> I started writing it. It's been about a year or two on it, probably three. Uh, and then um, thought, well, you know, how about a coloring book? <laughs> Make it for little kids, you know, little fifth graders or fourth graders and teach physics concepts. So. Now instead, I'm gonna do this Ask Me Tutoring instead. and just try and teach this way. So now let's go back and look at number, oh, by the way, before we get number three, we, be, we keep closing the left shade. If we close the right shade, let's say we close the right shade to here. Now, what's happening, um, like you might get this on a test and say, okay, describe the situation. What's happening? What would you, if you had to describe that in one sentence, somebody throw out a sentence there. I need to start calling on you, but uh, I don't want, you know, Eric, Eric's very, uh, Eric's very active and I thank goodness, appreciate it. But uh, some of you more quiet ones, um, uh, how about make this a rule of thumb? Try and answer at least a couple of questions during these sessions to kind of keep you awake. 
Because if all you do is listen, your brain falls asleep. So my question now, uh, since Eric's already jumped in there, to somebody else, what? G give me a one sentence, uh, one or two sentence description of what's happening here. Would it be like throwing a basketball and it getting stuck on the rim? Or? Exactly. So if you throw it, and it, now that basketball never reached its apex. So it didn't come up and come back down and get stuck on the rim. On the way, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh. well, I'm cool with that, but it had to get stuck on the rim, which means it had to hit that rim with the velocity and um, or had to come back down and hit the rim. So it has to it has to just nudge the rim where it doesn't get stuck. You see what I'm saying? Because the final velocity is zero. We'll work a problem here in a minute on this. Final velocity is zero. So I'll give you a seven out of 10 on that one. It could be so, like if someone is throwing a ball and then someone above them catches it. Right there at the apex. When I first learned how to play tennis, I didn't realize this. And I would try, and I'd throw the ball up to serve it and I would, <laughs> I didn't get this concept of apex and zero velocity. And I would try and hit the daggone ball on the way down or on the way up, but it was a moving target. And finally, one of my buddies said, ask you, why don't you just serve better? Just hit the ball at the apex. Okay. So that helped me a lot. Um, so, because at that point, the apex, there's no velocity uh, for temporarily because it's turning around. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, thank you guys. And one last, well, let's do a couple more. Now this one, now what Brandon said, a ball, if I throw a ball up, you see in basketball sometimes in pros, whatever, it comes down and gets stuck right there in the, you know, wedged into the rim. They have to stop the game for a second. That would be a case where I'm throwing a long half court shot or something comes down and gets stuck. Um, so it had an apex, came back down. But what about finally the last one is what about this situation? I mean, I can't emphasize the importance of these, this template is enough. So somebody else who has not jumped in, uh, what, give me that situation or a possible situation. Maybe you're throwing a ball from a roof and someone catches it like midway or halfway. You're throwing it down from a roof or throwing it up? Throwing it down. Ah, but look, uh, okay, thank you. Um, this initial velocity though is positive, right? And notice that the position is getting higher and higher. This is usually the hand, that's the hand. The hand's the origin. So it's rising. So maybe somebody's up on the roof and you're down below and you throw them the volleyball or something and they catch it before it reaches the apex on the way up. Or like say somebody sticks their arm out the window, hey, throw me the keys, the car. And you throw them up to them and they grab it. They grab the keys before they reach their apex, come back down. That is this situation. Okay, so thank you, Ayer, for getting, getting me something to talk about. And that's good enough, you, you get the idea. But there's seven of them. Uh, there's that, and th I explain all seven here, and then over here, here's the part you got to really study, I think. A good thing, once again, for your notebook, because on the test, the next test, uh, this will be on there, um, and students, about half the students miss a good chunk of this, because I give them blanks, and I say, okay, show me the situation, like I say, something like, um, I say, well, you throw a ball up, uh, you catch it, or I say you throw, okay, if you throw a ball down, it lands below you, that's going to be that situation. And it's just a matter of taking that window shade or window curtain and moving it over. Uh, here I threw it down, it landed below me. All right. So those are the seven you've got to know. It's kind of like beautiful patterns. You have to know all 21 graphs, but really you just have to know three graphs, okay? And then be able to cl close shades. I didn't, I started teaching this way about 10 years ago and it's totally changed how students, students, it really helps them. It seems like they take this knowledge with them when they go. Okay, then they're explaining it to their friends in college. So don't you get it? It's a window shade. Um, okay. Now we're, now we're back to this problem and we, we finished up with this problem the tau here, the total time is nine seconds. This is, this is throwing a ball up, 
off a roof and then landing on the ground below you, uh, the delta y is whatever. We're trying to figure it out. And v final y is whatever. So knowing this information, there, there's all your givens. Uh, let me give you, I'm gonna hit this thing on pause. And um, I still only have till, well, there's no reason to do that because I only have till two, so I gotta hurry. Uh, uh, okay, so we got a lot to cover still. So um, we'll go through it together. Uh, for the part A, you know, we have to find final velocity, but you just, I wouldn't go with the graphs. You could, but you got some equations there. Might as well use them. So they're pretty convenient. V final Y, V naught Y minus G. I'm going to say tau here because we're talking about total time, not just any old time because tau is nine seconds. And so you can say, well, good grief. That was easy. Uh, we just plug and chug. So V fine. There's no even no crazy units or nothing. So 12 meters per second minus uh, 9.81 uh, times nine seconds. Okay. And uh, you get a V final Y. I'm going to cheat here. Cheat. Look at the bottom. 3A. It says negative 76.3. You can verify that, but negative 76.3 meters per second. And then part B says, find the delta Y. Now this was the controversial one in class. We got into an argument with a student, not an argument, but a discussion, third hour on this one. And I gave him, I gave him a couple of discussion points. V naught T, when you argue with the teacher in physics, you get points. <laughs> v naught T minus one half GT squared. Why? Why? Because there's a truth. <laughs> because someone's right. It ain't like arguing politics. In physics, somebody's right. All right, so once again, it's a plug and chug. And that part is easy, right? We just plug in our numbers. And I'm going to save time here. I'm running low on time. So the delta Y, it's kind of nice knowing that we got it in by two. Uh, negative 289. Okay, so delta Y is negative 289, just a three ciggies, meters. And by the way, it's a tall building. The typical building has got about three meters, three to four meters per floor. So this is, we're talking a, you know, 90 some odd story building. And someone also brought up in class and said, well, wouldn't it, if that was the case, wouldn't it reach terminal velocity? I mean, wouldn't it? Well, yes. Yeah, we're going to get to that. That's later. Uh, I know it's not going to continue to accelerate at G. At that tall of a building, it's not going to continue to speed up. It's going to eventually reach a point where air drag counteracts the gravity down and the thing goes at a constant velocity. We'll get to that later. I promise you. Before G. Okay. So the final question says, on part C, it says, uh, what's the height of the building? Remember height. H is simply absolute value of delta Y. So, okay, fine. So it's 289. Now here's though, here was the controversy. Here's why this student got a couple of points. Because he said, I, he said, well, but that's not the height of the building. That's your delta Y. And I said, no, delta Y is the height of the building. And he said, no, no, look, delta Y is how far it fell. And he was saying this. So we took a vote in class. We said, this is your delta Y. And you know what? Most of the kids agreed with him. Can you imagine? <laughs> I love it. Uh, no, that is not delta Y. No, not delta Y. Delta Y only, this is, that's why I love this question. Delta Y, and it's his passion. Delta Y only cares about where you start and where you end, the path does not matter. This ball started here and ended here. Like when I was in the hallway doing the funky chicken and all that stuff we did and the old man walk, and I said, how far did I go? I went 34 meters. That was my uh, Delta S. That was my, no, no, Delta S, no, no, no. That was my path. I don't even know if it has a symbol. Um, but my displacement was negative four meters. 
because I started at the zero mark, I ended at the negative four meter mark. So that's all that matters. Same thing here. You go, well, then wait a minute. Then how will the question they asked was, well, then how do you deal with that apex? <laughs> like the, how does the equation know that you went up and not down or you just didn't drop it? And boom, that's this part, right? That's a positive 12 right? So it says up. I went up 12. If that was a negative 12, I would have thrown it down. Or if it was zero, I would have dropped it, right? So man, physics is awesome. It's all, it's all in the numbers. It's all in the equations. Physics works always. Okay, so six was homework. Seven. Okay, the last thing we got to do in this is number seven. And I sent them to the board on seven. And so um, we have about nine minutes here. Um, I want you to look at number seven. This is uh, Mr. Richardson and Patches. Uh, and um, I want you to try it. Uh, I'm not gonna hit pause because I don't, I'm so low on time right now. Um, but think about it, do a little drawing uh, and then it's, now notice though, in notice in this one, in number seven, what aren't you given? Well, let's say, what are you given? What is that four meters gonna be? Delta X. Eh, delta Y. You know, we're going vertical, so I'm going to be a little particular here. But yes, it is displacements, in this case, delta y. Uh, that's all we know. Um, we're not given time. Um, although we have something hit, we have hidden information. We know that g is 9.81 meters per second squared. Oh, and then we have an inferred information. Mr. Richardson throws the smooth stone. He doesn't want to hurt Patches. He only wants to nudge him barely, just wake him up, like barely hit his fur. So it's going to be one of those up, 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 hits, touches Patches, and then down, 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 down. So it's one of those situations where it's like this situation here, um, here, right? It's just going up. It nudges patches, and then that's all the part of the problem. The ball, the stone comes back down, but we don't care about that part. We only care about the part going up. So that would be our trio on number seven. Okay. So just the first part we care about. Uh, you can erase that second part. Okay. So um, that's your situation. Uh, up, 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 up hits patches. So my delta Y is four meters, about 12 feet. Um, v, there is some V naught. We don't, we want to know what that is. V naught Y is question mark. We know the V apex, by the way, this is called V final, but it's actually V apex because, and V apex is all V, <clears throat> I don't want to get in trouble later on. Let me say V Y apex. Vy apex is zero. Uh, not that's always true, and we're, we're going to shoot a rocket off on the west lawn. Uh, it'll be early next week, by mid next week probably, maybe early next week. Depending on the weather, and uh, little air rockets, not a big a deal. But I'll I'll take a video of it. Um, but the way we we're, we're 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 developing the green equations next week. And um, you, you look at the V apex knowing that that is zero as part of your calculations. Okay, so anybody got the answer here yet? You see, oh, what, by the way, what equation do we need? Somebody pipe up and tell me what equation do we need? Miranda, you've been quiet, given. I haven't heard anything from you yet, I don't think, Sophia. Michael. The third one. Okay, so she's she knew it all along. So we have delta y. E, what am I talking about? 
we have V final Y squared equals V naught Y squared minus two G delta Y. And we said that V, now we're using like a special case of that. Oh, you'll be the first one to hear, here's a green equation. V final Y is V apex, which is, okay, so V apex squared, in this case is zero, equals what we call V launch. This is a green equation. V launch squared minus two G height instead of delta Y, because if it's a launch, the delta Y is always positive, right? So it's no reason to call it delta Y, just be more specific and say height. And so, ba ba ba. now we can take that and we can simplify that. And so we have this equation. This is one of the, one of the launch equations. VL, V for launch, VL for launch, V launch, equals the square root of 2GH. And uh, so that, that'll solve this problem, by the way. The H is four meters. Of course, G is uh, not negative. G is 9.81 meters per second squared. A student Facebooked me last night and said, well, Mr. Askey, how am I supposed to take the square root of a negative number? And I said, G is not negative. Oh, right, okay. Uh, but that happens to the best of us. Sometimes you make it negative. And you punch it in, you got your answer. Here's my work from last year. I see I didn't actually answer it, but the answer is the bottom of the page, trivial, whatever. Okay, so um, now we're down to four minutes. And the other thing we did in class, what else? Oh, let me give you the homework. The homework is uh, number one and two on four two. And there's nothing, oh, I know we did, okay. So there's nothing really spectacularly crazy about those two problems, they're all, they should, if you look at number one and two and you have no idea what to do, you need to kind of go back and watch another, watch the videos again and practice some more because you should get these very straightforward problems. I'm not saying they're easy because it's new to you, but you should be able to get those problems uh, without too much uh, gnashing of teeth. Um, I do want to, uh, what we did in a couple hours got to this one, got to number six. And in fact, first hour, God bless them. I mean, I don't, we get further in first hour because we don't discuss it. They're real quiet for one thing. The other thing is I don't like, I don't discuss like with you all, we just, we talk about everything. So really, although it's virtual and that kind of sucks, you're getting the best presentation, you know, as far as information. Okay, the bootum, the bootum. Um, it says uh, a nut comes loose uh, from a, uh, oh, that's right, uh, from a bolt on the bottom of a elevator uh, as the elevator is moving up the shaft. Now this is the problem. We don't have time to work it, we'll just introduce it. This is a problem you see all the time in a physics textbook. Every physics textbook has this problem is moving up the shaft at three meters a second. So uh, once again, these are blue. Uh, there's your uh, V, V naught, Y. Uh, there's your time, it takes two seconds, but in that, that's actually in this case tau, because it is total time, it's of the flight. That's the tau of the flight of the bolt, the nut, I mean, the nut. Uh, so it comes loose and then uh, so it's rising. So this brought up in second hour, a discussion on inertia because, uh, that bolt, if you look at that bolt, it's going, it's the nut, it's going to come off and then it's going to keep rising because inertia, or in this case, momentum. Momentum is something called the last thing we'll talk about. Momentum is, is moving inertia. Inertia is this very, very weird, and we'll spend uh, probably a few couple of days talking about inertia later on, but inertia is mass, but its mass has a tendency to keep doing what it's doing. We're not even sure why. Newton's first law, a body in motion stays in motion, a body rest stays at rest. In the same velocity, a body in motion in the same velocity, unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Um, so, uh, in this case, that, that 
nut is going to keep rising because of Newton's first law, because of law of inertia or, or momentum, because it has momentum. Momentum is simply mass times velocity. Uh, Newton could not really measure the inertia of anything, couldn't measure the mass, so he measured this momentum instead. And that's why we have that, you know, more about that later. But so this little nut is moving up, continues to move up because of inertia until gravity finally wins. Remember, gravity keeps whispering, come back, come back. It's very gentle. Earth's gravity is very gentle. It doesn't seem like when you're falling out of a tree, but it is very gentle. Okay, so we'll pick that up there next time. Don't worry about that one. One and two is your new homework. Uh, if you wanna finish up your old stuff, uh, do that. There's your, for the doggies, and I'm not sure your doggies work here, but one and two. Maybe, how about this? This I know we're done here, but how about this? Maybe at the end of the week, you PDF me like once a week, your updated work. So instead of being like do every day, Yours has to be done by, say, Saturday or by something. Because you have different schedules, right? All right, well, I'll, I'll kick that idea around. Okay. Let me stop the sharing. All right, everybody. I know you got to go. So uh, I will talk to you all later. Uh, check me on Facebook or message me. Uh, see you tomorrow.